Welcome to this series of short training videos on using your Concept Measurement Torque Hub system. To start with, screw in the power adapter for your display unit like so, making sure that it is securely tightened. Then either plug the other end of the power cable into a vehicle power socket, or have a qualified electrician wire it directly to the vehicle's battery. Press the power button on top of the display unit and wait a few seconds for the device to start up. If the red LED on the power button doesn't light up, then double check your power connections. When the device is finished starting up, you'll be presented with a screen like this one. The screen responds to touches, however for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to use a mouse so that you can see what buttons I'm pressing. The first task is to set up the units of measurement you wish to use. You only need to do this once as the system will remember your previous selections. Click on the menu button here and then click Preferences. Click on Units of Measurement. Use the right and left buttons to change the desired units to the ones you wish to use. When you're happy with them, click on Close and you'll be returned to the main screen. Note the date and time in the top left of the screen. These should be set in the factory. However, if they are incorrect, you can use the same Preferences menu again to set them to the correct values. Once you have reviewed and saved your preferences for the system, it's time to connect to your Torque Hub or Torque Spool. First, make sure your Torque Hub is turned on. If you do not see a red LED in the Torque Hub's power button, then check that your battery is connected and replace with a fully charged one if necessary. On the display unit, click on the menu button, then click on the Connect to Pin or Hub button here at the top left. Usually the system will start to scan the network for torque hubs and torque spools as can be seen here at the top. If it does not start automatically, then click on the Scan for Devices button here at the top right. It might take a few seconds for your device to appear. If you have multiple torque hubs in the area, you'll have to make sure to select the device that matches the serial number of your torque hub. Once selected, click on the Connect button and the system will automatically select a free radio channel to communicate on. If the system does not connect first time, go back to the connection screen and rescan for your device. Select it and manually select one of the radio channels to the right. Sometimes on job sites there can be other devices such as radios disrupting some of the channels, so you may need to experiment to see which channel works best on your site. Once connected, you'll see the battery level here at the top, the current torque being measured is on the left, and the bullseye here in the middle shows the angle of the drilling. Due to temperature and tooling, when the torque hub is at rest, it is often not bang on zero. Press the dial and press zero pin to cancel the offset and set the hub to zero. All data must be recorded under a job and a pile name. So to start logging data, click on the menu button again and select job management. We are taken to the job screen, where we could either select an existing job to use, or start a new job. I'm going to start a new job. Use the on-screen keyboard to enter a new job name. In our case, it's Riversong Arena. Once we have named our new job, we highlight it by touching on it, and then press the Select Job button. You can see that at the top right of the screen, I now have my job selected. All of the piles that I drill for this job will be stored under this job name. To start a new pile, I simply tap the New Pile button and I'm brought to this screen, where I can either select from an existing pile or add a new one. Because this is a new job, there aren't any piles underneath it, so we're going to create a new one. Click on New Pile and then enter the details you want. Each pile must at least have a name and that name has to be unique within the job. I'm just going to call this pile Pile 1. I can also enter a target torque that I need to achieve and a target depth, but these values are optional and can be left blank. But for this example, I'm going to set a target torque of 8,000 foot pounds and a target depth of 8 feet. When I am done with this screen, I press Save and I'm returned to the pile list screen. From here, I can carry on adding the data for the rest of the piles that I need to drill for this job or I can simply select a pile by highlighting it and pressing Select Pile. We are now returned to the main screen, 
ready to start drilling pile 1 of the Riversong Arena job. There's a couple of things to notice here. The pile name is now displayed at the top right of the screen next to the job name. Our target torque is now displayed in the centre of the torque dial, along with a green colour coded section here to show the target range. The target depth is also displayed here on the right of the screen. When data is being logged, this red recording icon at the top left will be illuminated. To record an increase in pile depth, tap this plus button on the right hand side of the screen. You can see that the depth will increase by one foot for each click. If you wish to add a larger piece, click on the add joint button and enter the length you wish to add. Note this screen remembers the last number you entered. So if you wish to add another 8 foot section, just click add joint and enter and it will remember that it was 8 feet that is to be added. After each pile is completed, use the new pile button to move on to the next pile. Once you have finished logging all of the pile data, it's time to export those logs. Click on the menu button and select Job Management. Select the job you wish to export and click Export Piles. You have the choice of either emailing the data or copying it to a local USB memory key. In addition, you could send the data as just a text file for reading into Excel or the like, or you can send the data as a formatted PDF document. To copy to USB, unscrew the USB cover on the back of the display unit like this and insert a USB memory key. Press either Copy Text to USB Key or Copy PDF to USB Key and the files will be copied into a folder called Exported Data. Once the copy is finished, insert the memory key into your computer and you can access the PDF or text files. To email the report out, first you need to connect your display unit to the internet. To do this, from the main screen, click on the menu button and then click on Wi-Fi Network. This will list the nearby Wi-Fi networks. Click on one and select Join. You will be asked to enter the password and press Enter. You will now be connected to that network. I'm already connected to mine, so I'm just going to return to the main screen and press Menu, followed by Job Management and Export Piles to get back to the Export screen. Enter an email address for the recipients, separated by spaces if there's more than one, and then click Send. Note that when using the on-screen keyboard, this drop-down list here saves the last 20 entries. So if you're repeatedly sending jobs to the same people, you can use this to save typing in each time. When you're finished using your display unit, it's always a good idea to shut it down using the power button here. This gives the unit time to finish copying any files and will reduce the risk of corrupted data. Once the unit has finished shutting down, you can turn it off at the power switch here. Remember to turn off your Torque Hub as well. Thank you for watching this introduction to the Concept Measurement Torque Hub product. Further information can be found in the instruction manual provided with your system.